Hey y'all, welcome back to my YouTube channel on building a budget 300B do-it-yourself amplifier. I want to start off the video today going over some basic line AC safety wiring tips. And this is really important. You don't want to build an amplifier that's dangerous or could potentially electrocute someone when it's really simple to wire these things up where it's done safely and there's no possibility that the chassis can become energized. And so this is for US wiring. There's a three connector plug. This one's hot, this one's ground, and this one's neutral. You absolutely need to run a fairly large, like 18 gauge, solid copper wire from this ground terminal in a very short path with a soldered lug and bolt this to the chassis near the plug area here. Grind the powder coating off. Use a star washer, a nut, the lug, another star washer, and then another nut. You do never want to share this with anything like one of these uh, nuts that's holding on the socket that's mounted in plastic because it could come loose. You want to get this really tight and like I said, grind off the powder coating so you know you've got a good earth ground. Then the other thing that's important is either use a fused one of these power connectors or if you're going to use a separate fuse, the fuse like this amp does, the wire goes from the hot to the center of the fuse, not the side, the center of it. The reason you do that, if you, if you make the side of this hot, then you, when you take the fuse out, if somebody stuck their finger like up against there, they get shocked. So you want to go to the center terminal of the fuse holder, and then the side of it goes to the switch, and then it goes to the transformer. And the reason it's wired like this is, let's say the insulation breaks down on one of your high tension wires, and it touches the chassis, or the transformer winding short out to the frame and then to the chassis. If that happens and it's wired like this, it will instantly blow the fuse. If you don't have this ground wire hooked up like this, the whole chassis in a failure could become electrified and somebody walks over to turn up the volume or touches part of the thing and gets hit with 400 volts DC and it kills them. The other thing that I want to say very clearly is if you don't feel comfortable working around high voltage, do not attempt a project like this. This isn't something where you drink a couple of beers and then you go downstairs or you're tired and you start messing with it. If you touch the wrong wire while this thing's powered up, it can literally make your heart stop and kill you. So there's plenty of websites on YouTube that go over safety and using isolation transformers and all of that sort of stuff. So I'm not going to attempt to repeat that. But I did want to clarify that point on this AC wiring. Somebody mentioned it in the comments that I hadn't talked about that yet in this series. And so I wanted to cover that. So let's dig into the 300B amp. And let me show you what I've gotten done so far this week. Okay, here's the inside of the 300B. And I've gotten most of the power supply wiring completed. Last week we went over the, these are the rectifiers for the 5 volts DC that's going to the filaments of the 300 B tubes. This is all the 
110, 120 volt AC line voltage wiring over here in this corner here. This wire here, this bundle of wires here is the 375, 0, 375 windings off the big power transformer. And these are the 375 volts. This red with a stripe is the center tap that goes to the star ground that we've created right here off this bolt holding this tube socket in place. We've also got this little black wire here that was soldered to the copper clad shield that we put underneath the transformer and it's also connected to ground. What we did with this terminal strip right here, which is, um, let's see, it's got one, two, three, four, five, six terminals. The second one is the, the one that goes to the chassis. I got a piece of 14 gauge solid copper wire and soldered it from this pin to this pin to this pin. So all three of these are connected together with a heavy gauge wire. And this is our star ground point for the whole chassis. Everything signal related is going to be grounded to this point of the chassis. And that's a very important thing that we need to do to make sure that we don't have any hum in this amplifier. And as we go along, I'll show you how we use this star ground point to have a common ground for everything in the amplifier. So I'm going to go over this little terminal strip right here that's bolted down to the same bolt that holds this 6.3 volt filament transformer in place. And a little tip, if you have a hard time, like this, there was a nut that had to go on this side, and it was really hard to get your fingers in there and hold anything, I got a little bit of contact cement and put it on the, the terminal, the, you know, the, the mounting terminal, and the nut, and glued the nut to it and let that set up a little bit, and then I, it made it real simple to put the bolt through and start it into the nut. So that's just a little trick if you got a tight space and you can't really reach in there to get to the nut. So we're using this five terminal strip that's got a center ground point and the two 6.3 volt windings come up here to these two terminals. The center is gonna be our ground and we have this black wire that runs from this, this center terminal over here to our star ground point. Now, one thing I've seen people say that they don't like bolting any other ground points to the chassis. And while I agree that in a scientific laboratory kind of way, that's not what you should be doing in a, in a perfect star ground scenario. But my experience with electricity is electricity, most of it will take the path of least resistance, which is going to be this copper wire. And I've built multiple amplifiers using this grounding scheme, and I've never had any problem with the amplifiers having any, having any hum in them. And so I feel like this is kind of a common sense way of doing this that it, it makes it easy to do, but it's not overwhelming. So like I was saying, these are the 6.3 volt. This one's ground. The center tap goes to this lug, and then the one at the very bottom is the B plus that's going to be 450 volts-ish around there. And I wired this up like this because at some point we're going to be raising the DC offset of this 6.3 volt winding to the 6 SN7s. And we're going to do that by using the center tap with a voltage divider. And by wiring this up like this, it's going to be real easy to just put a resistor from this bottom pin to this pin, and then another resistor from this pin to the ground, and their voltage divider network will be right here, and that will set the DC offset. So the next part we have to deal with is the rectifier tube. And pins 4 and 6 or where the 375 volt hot leads go. 
and then the center, like I said, the center tap goes to ground. Then the heater windings, the five volt heater wires go to pins two and eight. And then pin eight is where the high voltage DC is pulled from. So we have this 630 volt, 33 UF film cap. That's the first capacitor in our filtering network. It's connected straight to this two pin, and then the other side of it comes back around here to ground. Then off of this number eight pin, the first wire goes to the 10 Henry choke. That's the big choke that's on the front, on the top of the amplifier. And then it, the, the other wire that comes out of it is connected to this pin on the end. And then we have this 100 UF 500 volt capacitor that goes from that connection point to ground. Also from this point, we have the wires going to the two chokes. And this is the point where the split rail power supply splits. We have one wire going to one choke that's for one channel. And then the other wire goes to this choke, which is for the other channel. And then the wires coming out of that, one of them goes to this pin, and one of them goes to this pin. And this second choke is where we're going to pull the reference voltage off for our voltage divider for the DC offset on the input tube heaters. So here's where I'm going to explain how this split rail power supply works. Here are the two lugs that have the output from the twin chokes in the front. The next thing we're going to do is run a wire from each one of these terminals over here to the plus side of these big reservoir capacitors. And then the these red wires are the power the hot leads for the output transformers. So the way this works is that when a really strong note like a drum kick comes in the input tube, tells the output tube, need to send a big thump to the speaker, it's going to pull the amperage that it needs for that drum kick from this big reservoir capacitor. And again, path of least resistance. It's zero ohms connected to this reservoir capacitor that's a 250 UF, 500 volt, that's gonna be full of electricity. So it's gonna pull it from here instead of trying to pull it from across here and then through the resistance that's in the choke and from this 100 UF capacitor. The idea is that each channel has its own reservoir capacitor that is filled up. They're topped back up by the electricity that comes from the rectifier. It goes through the big choke. It comes back up. It goes through the small chokes and then fills this capacitor back up but it shouldn't affect the power that's available on the other channel and there shouldn't be any crosstalk between them. And that's the whole idea behind building monoblocks is each channel has its own transformer and capacitors and chokes and all of that stuff so that when uh, a really strong, like I said, a drum kick or a big bass, strong bass note is hit, that the other channel isn't affected. And we're going to accomplish the same thing by using these two big reservoir capacitors directly connected to the output transformers. And these chokes will decouple the channels from each other. So I hope that makes sense. So my next step is going to be to wire up these high voltage wires over to these capacitors, 
get the speaker wires connected, and then start mounting the input tubes that are over here in the front of the amp, the input tubes, and start getting the wiring run over there and the decoupling setup that we're going to be using for those capacitors. So far, we haven't had to drill any extra holes in the top of the chassis for mounting these terminal strips, and I'm hoping that I can find bolts that are already holding tube sockets or transformers down. We mounted these two caps using the bolts holding the transformers down to keep the top of the amp really clean looking. And the other thing I want to show you, I did get the cooling holes drilled around both of the 300B tube sockets. And I did this using a Photoshop template that I made that looks like this. And I'll link it in the description so that if you want to download this template, you can. I learned from a previous amp that trying to do these by eye, they end up looking terrible. And so this time I made a, a, a paper template. I taped it to the top of the amplifier like you saw in the last picture and then the centers were all marked and I was able to center punch each of those holes and drill them out and came out with a nice even pattern of cooling holes that go around the tubes and the idea is that the heat that the tube puts out will rise up and it will pull cooler air from inside the amplifier up past the tubes and it will also help evacuate any heat that may be built up on the underneath of the amplifier. I am going to use, I had thought that I might use these type of tube sockets that bolt down, but as you can see, it blocks part of the cooling holes. And so I found these new old stock tube sockets that are like this, that have this little wavy ring that holds them in place and by using these we've got plenty of air coming around the outside of it and once I figure out the orientation I may I'm either going to use plyo bond or maybe some pot glue I haven't decided yet to lock, nail these down so they can't spin once we get them in the position that we want and I haven't decided yet how to orient these tubes. The other thing we still have yet to do get them out two potentiometers that are going to be the hum pots for the heater pins on the 300 B's and the center of that is going to come over to the cathode bypass or the cathode bias resistor that's going to be mounted on the top We've also got to figure out where we're going to mount the 5 volt regulators that supply the power that will go to these hum pots. And so I haven't decided exactly how I'm going to orient all that stuff. And But I'll, by the next video I'll have that figured out. And then again we need to drill the holes, mount the 6S and 7 sockets, and then start figuring out how we're going to wire all of that part up. So anyway, um, between now and the next video, I'm going to put the 5AR4 rectifier in and go ahead and bring that up on the Variac. Anyway, I hope you're enjoying my videos, and please subscribe, please like, tell your friends, share on social media, share in your forums, and Look forward to seeing you all as we continue with this build. Have a great day.